What's the best speaker enclosures? All right. Well, this great question comes from Balraj in Mumbai, India. And Balraj writes, which is the best speaker enclosure in terms of good sound with the same size and make of speakers? With all the necessary components, such as a crossover or whether it be active or passive, a, a three-way or a two-way or whatever you're building, which would be best sounding in that kind of enclosure? Sealed, ported, or transmission line? And then not, I don't want to consider any factors such as price, space, size, or complicated designs. Only considerations should be the best sound yielding from this kind of enclosure. Okay, so I hadn't looked at this question before. I, th the, I don't know that that's exactly what you mean. Wh when, I, when we say enclosure, I'm thinking, uh, you know, what kind of box, but you're talking about what kind of design would be best for, say, a three-way system. And you've mentioned ported, sealed, or uh, uh, transmission line. Um, I, I'm not the speaker expert. Our speaker expert is uh, Chris Brunhaver. And by the way, Chris is, a after we get done with uh, a, a couple of projects here, I've, I've uh, coerced Chris into starting his own YouTube series, which I'm very excited about. Chris will be talking daily about speakers, their design, how to design. We're, in fact, I think we're gonna start out with a, a project, like kind of a do-it-yourself project for speakers. Wouldn't that be cool? And, and, and Chris knows more about speakers than just about anybody I've ever met in my life. And uh, he's, he's amazing. So he's up for it. He's gonna start sharing on YouTube, so I'll, probably back away from some of these questions that I only have, you know, a modicum of knowledge on, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best for you. So of the three types that you talked of, sealed, ported, and transmission line, those essentially all concern the way we handle bass. And that's the biggest factor that uh, we would, you know, that you're talking about in that. So a, a transmission line, which is something probably most people don't know about, is a maze. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a separate woofer area where the back of the woofer, instead of just going into a box, goes in through a series of um, baffles to where it extends the length of the wave and then finally comes out into a port. And the idea being of, of a transmission line is to take a long enough time for the back wave of the woofer to travel in order to come out in phase at the output of the port. And that gives uh, uh, um, our old friend um, Bud Freed used to do that in the Freed loudspeakers. That was his big deal, was everything had to have a transmission line and all the, the port stuff used to come out, you know, I, if I remember right, it came out the front, but I don't remember. Anyway, it was to, to, to just a different way of handling the port system. Now, a normal port would just be a hole in the box, right? So you got the woofer, you, you've got a, a, a space, you've got a hole in the box, which is uh, usually has a port tube and it's a very calculated hole to where the tube length and the hole itself is calculated to extend below resonance the uh, uh, woofer response. So you get a little bit deeper bass and it comes out usually out of phase. But uh, again, I get, I get in over my head on those ports because it can be very complicated to design a proper port. Uh, and then a sealed box, of course, is what we prefer sealed box enclosures haven't any holes in them and then you do whatever you need to do. You could servo uh, the woofer. You can servo it, you can EQ it, you can do all kinds of things to, to deal with the box resonance, to get it below resonance and, and get it flattened out. A, thir a fourth way that you didn't mention is a passive radiator of one that I'm kind of a fan of that. Properly designed a passive radiator which looks in many cases like another driver but doesn't have a motor on it and and that's another port but it's able to be tuned 
in such a way that the output is really, it doesn't fart and make all these chuffing sounds like a port might do, but it, it will produce lower bass. Now, the companies that have used that traditionally, Polk Audio, Sandy, Gross's company, uh, Golden Ear and Definitive Audio, they've always had these passive radiators in that. Which is the best? I prefer sealed, but they are also trickier to design and get good bass out of. You gotta have higher quality drivers, a bit better design, you might have to EQ it a little bit, much more complicated uh, crossovers. So my first choice would always be sealed. My second choice would be a, um, uh, a passive radiator. So I hope that helps. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.